Powdy, and welcome back to the Texas Bucket List. You know, every once in a while here on the show, we get a wild hair and feel like howling at the moon. That was definitely the case in Montgomery, where we came across the state's only wolf sanctuary to get a look at some amazing animals. <laughs> Down a long, windy road on the west side of Montgomery County, just a few miles from the Sam Houston National Forest, you'll find a facility where you won't mind getting thrown to the wolves. Definitely a unique feature to the neighborhood. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it ups the property values a lot. Totally. <laughs> Brittany McDonald is one of the caretakers at the St. Francis Wolf Sanctuary. I've wanted to work with wolves since I was eight years old, and so to just be here is a dream come true. Hi. Hello, good boy. Yes, you can be me. In 2002, the sanctuary got started after a mischievous wolf named Mystery was spotted roaming the woods nearby. After being shot and captured, Mystery rehabbed and lived out her days at the sanctuary, started by a local woman who really loves all of God's creatures, Jean Lafitte. She just had this passion for animals and wanted to do what she could to help. Now, 13 wolves and wolf dogs call St. Francis home. So wolf is obviously the pure form and the dog is mixed in with dogs. Um, wolves occur naturally in the wild, whereas wolf dogs rarely do. The wolf dog thing is kind of a new fad that people created when they started mixing wolves with their uh, domesticated dogs to make a really cool looking pet that they hope to be as friendly as man's best friend. Uh, typically it doesn't work out that way and that's exactly why we're here. Popular culture has made pups of this kind a bit of a problem. We do definitely have a lot more of them around and not to blame Game of Thrones, but I'm probably a little bit responsible for the fad. <laughs> Can I borrow one for Halloween and yeah. do my Jon Snow impression? Yes, there you go, yes. <laughs> Turns out, once these guys get long in the tooth, they can be a handful. They assume that because it's mixed with dog, it's gonna have the dog temperament and the wolf looks, and that doesn't really apply. The wolf characteristics are very dominant. Uh, that fear of humans, the destructiveness, the you know desire to escape and to do wolfy things. You've given me a new term. I'm gonna go do wolfy things. Wolfy things, yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is Miko. Yes. What's Miko's story? So Miko was actually born and raised uh, at a zoo. And from the day he was born, the keepers um, hand raised him because they thought that it would make him more uh, socialized. And it, it definitely did do that. And the reason that they wanted to do, do that is because they wanted to turn him into a kind of a photo prop for guests that could come in and pay a certain fee to play with him and hold him. So you'll see that he's really social. He's coming up even though there's strangers here, he's wagging his tail. He is not at all afraid of people. So he's my favorite because I have this personal connection with him, but he's also just got so much charisma and this, you know, out of this world personality. Uh, but he'll still remind you that he's got wolf in him, uh, especially when food is involved. So he's, he's the whole package. <laughs> Miko shares his pen with two other female wolves, sort of a wolf pack that the sanctuary creates for each of their wild friends. Matching them up is kind of like playing matchmaker. You just kind of figure out who likes who. Yeah, we uh, sometimes call ourselves the OK Cupid of the wolf world because we do have to, you know, make sure that they can match up because having a companion is really important for them, just like it is for people. They really rely on that social bond. <coughs> It didn't take long for the social bond between Miko and his mates to make a bit of noise during our visit. All their houses are elevated so it can allow for airflow and they have doors on every side so we can open it up a lot during the, the hot seasons. I'm scared to look. I know. I don't know if I should look. Maybe they're not doing something we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's just correcting her, her new child. Three pack drama over here. It's almost like a typical human relationship. Yeah. I mean, the dude's just like, hey ladies, hey ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all get along it's all good. here. It's all good. Yeah. There's enough of me to go around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two of y'all, one of me, it's yeah. good. <laughs> all joking aside, these wolves depend on the sanctuary, not only for social interaction, but vaccines, and most importantly, meal time. These guys eat an all raw meat diet. So depending on the size of the animal, their activity level, they might eat more or less than others. But we have two animals currently that eat four pounds of food a day, and that is, you know, way up there, but they burn it off. If you're luckier, if you plan an overnight stay to camp with the wolves, you'll be able to hear the serenade. That makes a stop at the sanctuary all worth it. 
Some of our wolves actually howl a little bit less wolfy than you would expect. So Lapua back here, we joke that she sounds like a hyena or a coyote rather than a wolf. She hasn't quite figured it out yet. Um, but it's impressive. I mean, every single time it's, it's just this beautiful sound. The neighbors around here love it. They sit out on their porch and drink coffee and they listen for that howl. And yeah, it's, it's magical. But if you come on a full moon, you'll never know who could show up. We need a burly guy like you that's got all the facial hair oh, and just yeah, come yeah. out like... I can play the wolf man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wolves are no longer found in the Lone Star State. But for an up-close encounter with these magical animals with sizable smiles, a stop at the St. Francis Sanctuary in Montgomery, Texas is well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list. The best part is when you have an animal that is really distrusting of people and eventually you get to watch it grow into an animal that has learned to forgive and to rely on you and, and you build a relationship with it and it doesn't always happen but when it does I mean like there's nothing better than that that's that's what we do this for.